17 to 3. Gamecocks over the Bulldogs. Ready for the second half of football from Williams Price Stadium. And now let's have a look at the Alka Seltzer Plus first half statistics. You see what we're talking about with Georgia on the left column there, only 85 yards running, 36 yards passing. And Georgia, in the last six quarters of football, counting last week's Mississippi State game, has given up over 600 yards in the air. Unbalanced production is something that we expected. South Carolina has done a good job of hamstringing that Georgia running game, but it can change any time. Henderson cut down at the 27. Georgia started out in its own 25 and just blew South Carolina off the ball in the first series. Just lop, lop, lops and punches the yards in every play. And then after that, South Carolina shut them down. They just did an excellent job of containing that run and making the tackle when they had to. Georgia ball, first down 10 at the 27, trailing 17-3. Worley and Henderson in the backfield. This is Henderson to the 33-yard line. Alfonso Ellis, 33, and Keith Henderson, number 30, alternate at, at fullback. Rodney Hampton, 7, and Tim Worley, 38, alternate at the tailback position. That time Georgia came out, Bob, at an unbalanced line. They had a receiver on the line of scrimmage to the wide side of the field, and Sadowski was also on the line. Now they're both off the ball. They shift. Wayne Johnson back at the helmet quarterback giving way to Greg Talley in the second quarter. Johnson hands it to Worley. Worley close to the first down. Hit by 51, Tim High. You almost have to have a different mentality when you're playing against a defense like South Carolina. You have, you know they're going to hit you sometimes. You're going to have tackles for loss. You're going to have bad plays. But you have to maintain your composure, keep your cool, and know you're going to break some big ones, too. If you just stick with it, just stick with it. Just keep hammering away. Just keep your, getting your hat on your man. Here come the sticks to measure this one. It's going to be short of the first down by just inches, so it'll be third down in inches for Georgia. And now Hampton goes in along with Alfonso Ellis in the backfield for Vince Dooley's Bulldogs. So it'll be a short yardage team on the field for Georgia now as they want to keep their drive alive. The ball spotted at the left side hash mark, 37-yard line. Georgia trailing 17-3. to Opening moments, second half. They've gone to kind of a wishbone look in the past and short yardage and goal line, Bob. Ellis, Hampton, Worley in the backfield. Johnson keeps it. Fumble! Followed on by Hampton. Georgia ball, but now will it be a first down? I believe he fell on it behind the first down marker. May have lost the first down. Johnson got it. Ball came loose. Hampton fell on it. They ought to bring it out here probably and measure again. Let's see it again. Johnson just trying to get to an open hole. See Hinton scoots by it. And I really can't tell Bob who put the hit on him. It's coming from uh, Matt McKernan's area there. So it looked like a 41st down by an inch. And now Sean, uh, Sean Hummings and John Thomas return to the ball game for Georgia. Also Henderson going back in there. Alfonso Ellis coming out. It's a real shuttle system with the backs for Georgia. First and 10 from the 37. Play fake to Worley. Complete to Henderson. First down. About an 11-12, maybe 13-yard gain. Ron Rebune and David Taylor on the stop. That's David Taylor's man, man for man. 95% of the time, South Carolina is going to be a man-to-man -man coverage. It doesn't matter where they go. You're going to go with your man. And it's a tough thing for a linebacker to do on that little play action to back his nose out of there and chase somebody laterally. Just inside Carolina territory, Worley. About three and a half yards near the 45-yard line, hit by Scott Windsor, number 20. Watch Derek Fraser work, and he's South Carolina number 90. Their, their best down line. 14 tackles last week. The second leading tackler. He's doing a good job getting rid of the block and getting to the football. Back 
comes the shuttle. Now it's Hampton and Ellis in the backfield for Georgia on the second down six. This is Hampton. Gain of two, no more. Ron Rabune, leading tackler for the Gamecocks out of the free safety spot, makes a stop. He is a senior from La Palma, California. With an attacking defense like this, Bob, containment becomes even more important. If they break containment to the outside, all the pursuit is coming focused on that cutback. And if it breaks to the outside, they all have bad angles, and it's going to be a long run. But as I said, amazingly, the longest run they've had against them was East Carolina, 30 yards last week in the last 15 games. Third down five, Georgia at the 45 of the game comes. Here they come on Johnson. Hit as he throws. It's picked off by Tolbert, and he's down at the 29. Tolbert had it, lost it, regained control. It is South Carolina ball at the 29. Johnson was hit as he threw the ball. Patrick Hinton right in his face. Let's watch Henderson trying to sneak out of there. He's there. George's leading receiver tries to get free down the sideline. Johnson is smacked as he lets go of the ball. Tolbert, a backup strong safety, but really playing more linebacker today, comes up with the play. Let's watch it. Boom! Got a big hit from Patrick Hinton, who's been a big play man for him. Came in here last year as a freshman. Derek Frazier getting a little break. Throw a little ice down there. That blew me off. Pass the ice cup to the booth. 12-10 to go, third quarter. South Carolina 17, Georgia 3, Gamecocks football. That's the second interception of the year by Wayne Johnson. Now we have Platt and Brooks split wide to the right side. Harden Brown to the left for Todd Ellis. Play fake to Green. Here comes pressure. Incomplete in and out of the hands of Harold Green. That's the second or third ball he's dropped out of the backfield today. Here's what South Carolina did on their possessions in the first half. It took them longer to get on track, Bob. And they had some drop balls at critical times, but at the last two times they had the football, <laughs> old Brooks and his right hand were pulling in everything in sight, you know, and Ellis really spread the ball out well, which means he's reading the coverage and going to the open man. Second down 10, Haynes and Green in the backfield for the Gamecocks. Flat in motion. Here's the delay to Haynes. He drives to the 34-yard line. Wycliffe Lovelace with the stop. Here's Mike Tolbert, a sophomore, 200-pounder. Did made a nice play. Nice play came off well with Henderson. Caught the ball a second time around. Mike, you only get one interception for that. It'll be third down five, South Carolina, from the 34-yard line of the Gamecocks. South Carolina leading 17 to three. Georgia on the drive when Johnson was hit, and it was picked off by Tolbert. That protection again. Incomplete intended for Brooks. Penalty marker down. Now the Georgia defensive back, Ben Smith, is saying he was pulled out, as opposed to the fact that he was the offender. Pass interference on the defense. First down. Ben Smith argues otherwise, but it goes against Georgia. Let's watch Ben Smith work here. He's man-to-man -man underneath on Robert Brooks. Pushes him to the outside, wants to stay on his inside hip. You know me, Bob. I don't believe in pass interference anyway. Make those guys play. Ben Smith had a good case, in my opinion. Nevertheless, first down, South Carolina at the 44-yard line. See, what Ben Smith had there was position. He didn't hook him. He just had position on him. He couldn't get it turned inside. The ball was thrown to the outside. First down, South Carolina. And off to Haynes, the fullback. He gets about five right up the middle, went off right guard behind Calvin Stevens, perhaps the most physical of the South Carolina offensive linemen. Al Groh is really happy with the way Todd Ellis has taken instruction too, Bob. I mean, Todd is a... a, a an ambitious learner. He wants to know what to do. He wants to know how to develop into a great NFL quarterback. And the way to do it is to be a great quarterback here at South Carolina. It's second down five. Lovelace got back. Here's the handoff to Green. Nice run first down, South Carolina. 
They like Harold Green a lot. He is playing on a sore foot today. He's a 6'2", 215-pound tailback. And when I talked to the coaches, I said, you know, how much distance is there in talent between Green and the other tailbacks? And Joe Morrison made it real clear, a lot of distance. They like Green a lot. He's the guy they have to have to balance the Carolina offensive attack. And they both, he and Bing, have played with courage today because they're both hurt. They haven't practiced all week long, and they're, uh, they're surviving on those ankles. Ellis play fakes to Haynes, throws on the run behind Harold Green. Well executed. That was a little reminiscent of last year's run and shoot type South Carolina offense where they'd sprint out, throw the short passes. This year, Al Groh has put that pro set in, giving them a whole lot more variety in the offensive attack. And you know, we talk about Al Groh. He's on the sidelines there, the headsets on, and uh, there he is with his son Michael next to him holding the cord. And uh, he was the head coach of Wake Forest for a number of years, broke all their total offensive records there when he was there. And, Brought them into football respectability. Spent last year with the Atlanta Falcons as tight end and special teams coach. On second down, 10. Ellis. Ellis Green. This time, Green catches it after Ellis hits him. Green over the seven or eight. <laughs> Green dives forward to the 38 yard line. Stop made by 93 Brent Collins. Let's watch this Barrett's blitz working. Tarditz is. Richard Tartitz, number 92, one of the quickest men in college football. He gets Ike Harris going upfield, tries to work back underneath him, but Ike sits in there well, handles him with his hands, doesn't let him through. His toughest, his toughest move is straight upfield, and that's what he's been trying to do, but Harris is doing an admirable job there, keeping him out. Third down three for South Carolina at the 38 of Georgia. Ellis with the blitz, gets rid of it. It's complete to Brooks. Good move, dives forward to the 29. You gotta like Brooks. He looked for the move, give him a little dance step. When he saw it wasn't there, Brooks just leaned his head in and got the yardage. Todd Ellis going to the blitz check off there. Georgia coming after them. Georgia will show you this look, back out and play coverage, or they'll come after you. Ellis checks off here and pops it out to Brooks. Platt just Walling off the inside man, trying to get a block. The ball is going to Brooks the whole way. Target makes a tackle. Brooks, five catches for 60 yards today, has one great touchdown grab of 46 yards. Now it's a first down, South Carolina. Ellis, deep drop this time. Floats it out here to Haynes, the fullback. Cuts it back inside. He goes down hard. Ball is fumbled out of bounds at the 25. It will be South Carolina ball. You know, people take little things for granted. But Todd Ellis is disarming part of Georgia's power defense with his voice. And he's getting them jumping across the ball. It's a lot easier to block somebody if he's moving away from you when the ball is snapped. And so he's taking advantage of that. Georgia needs to stick, those guys need to stick something in your ear so you can't hear that. You watch the ball. Second down, six. Just inside the 25-yard line of Georgia. Quick handoff to Dingle, the fullback. Now he had more yardage. He tried to stretch it outside and lost some. Eric Chubb gets the tackle for Georgia. Gain of very little, maybe a yard. Dingle's a big one, 6'3", 230. From Monk's Corner, South Carolina. See, when they got ready for this game, they had to be concerned about keeping Goldberg out of there on a pass rush and Tarditz out of there on a pass rush, and they've done a nice job on both those things. The other way they've kept those people out of the backfield is they've thrown the ball on a three-step drop. They've gotten rid of it in a hurry, didn't give them time to rush. Three wideouts, a tight end, single setback is Bing. Look at the protection. Ellis floats it, end zone. Excellent coverage down there. The pass was intended for Hart Brown, David Hargett, the man nearest the ball, but there were three Georgia defenders down in that area. That time, Hargett was man-to-man -man underneath on Hart Brown, and he did stick well. And like I said, this week, they talked all week about the corner. Let them throw something else, but don't let them throw it there. Take that away from them. Mackey to attempt a 42-yard field goal. He has kicked 14 consecutive field goals. He hits it well. It's good. 15 field goals in a row for All-American, preseason All-American, Colin Mackey. It's 20 to 3, South Carolina, with 7 minutes, 59 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Congress. 
Jim Leventis, a congressman for a new century. At William Price Stadium, Columbia, South Carolina, Carolina has taken a 20-3 lead over Georgia. The Bulldogs' running game has not been running well today. A lot of time left. Here's that short pop-up again. It comes down to Henderson again, and he's chased right out of bounds at the 32-yard line. We talked about the South Carolina kicking problems. They don't have a guy who can get it into the end zone, so they use their field goal kicker to get it up in the air, take it away from the deep back threats, and try to keep it around the 30-yard line. They've done that reasonably successfully today. Yeah, I would just soon not have Whirly and Henderson or Hampton with the ball in open field. It's a big enough problem when you can surround them with 11 people. They spotted at the 31-yard line. Georgia trailing 20 to 3, and the 12,000 Georgia fans hoping the Bulldogs can get something rolling here. 12,000 on hand today. Johnson, incomplete, intended for Thomas. Wayne Johnson is three out of seven for 33 yards and one interception today. Tally did not much better, three out of eight for 17 yards, no interceptions. You'd rather throw it to the slot man against this coverage, Bob. It's not as long a throw. When you don't throw the ball a lot, you'd rather throw it to the closer receiver, especially when you know they're man-to-man. -man. Second down, 10 Georgia from their own 31. Worley and Ellis in the backfield. This is Ellis. Oh, tough yardage. He gets it to about the 37. David Taylor, Ron Rebune, and about seven other Gamecocks had a shot or two at the fullback, Alfonso Ellis, who's not a big guy for a fullback. He's 5'9", 205. Built low to the ground, big thighs. But that's a five-yard gain. That's a five-yard gain. In the... I hope Georgia doesn't get away from their bread and butter. Third down five. Worley. There is 42 David Taylor on the third down play. I'm going to point something out to you, Bob. Alfonso Ellis is as good as there is in the country at getting people on the ground. Look at David Taylor, fight him off, keep his feet, and make the tackle. That's what this South Carolina defense does. They stay on their feet. They don't lose their pursuit lanes. Holes aren't created in their defense. Hester averaging 46 yards per punt today. Almost blocked. Platt at the 26. Avoided the tackle, takes it to the 28. 44, John Allen made the stop for Georgia. 6.29 to go, third quarter. South Carolina, 20. They hold Georgia again. 20 to 3, South Carolina. 6.29 to go, third quarter. Bob Neal, Tim Foley with you from williams Bryce Stadium. 92 degrees here in middle South Carolina today. Harold Green looking for some help. Georgia screaming it up. Green getting about three and a half yards. Morris Lewis with a stop for the Georgia Bulldogs. Big, so, I'm sorry, Bob. Purdue. Oh, wait ooh. a minute. It's not out of control yet. No, Purdue can come back. I bet Notre only Dame's feeling pretty confident about now, but Purdue can come back. <laughs> There's a big one, too. West Virginia. Both those schools off to good starts this year. Clemson in a tight one with Georgia Tech down in Atlanta. Bobby Dodd Stadium. Penn State having a battle with Rutgers. That's just before halftime. Colorado, Oregon State. The close one in early in the ball game. Second down six. Gamecocks. Ellis. It's complete. Let's see where they spot it. It is a first down to the 39-yard line. Anthony Parler with the reception. Todd Ellis is having fun out there, Bob. 33 attempts. 21 receptions, 232 yards as you look at other scores. Kentucky will have Kentucky at home against Alabama next week. Alabama playing Vanderbilt this afternoon. That game started at 2.30 Eastern time, so it just got underway a little while ago. Duke way out in front, but now Virginia coming back. On first down, in motion goes Rush. Swings it to Green. Georgia territory, target with the tackle, 
sooner or later, Tim, you got to say that, yes, Georgia is vulnerable to the pass, short and long. It's a real difficult job for Georgia to stop this possession passes. They just got to start coming after them, Bob, now. They've got to get, they got to start playing them tighter underneath. Maybe they may be mid mismatched in that situation, but they got to start doing it now. You have to cause something to happen defensively now. First down at the 49-yard line of Georgia. Rush in motion. Ellis is getting warmed up to. This time, Georgia stops the hole by Haynes for a loss. One more score from Southeastern Conference play today. Mississippi State at Florida. The 10th, 18th ranked Gators out in front, 10 to nothing. Rocky Felker over at Mississippi State says we're so close, and they are. And they are. It's a good football team, and, and they could have a, a one-loss record, a poor season this year, but ask Georgia about Mississippi State. They gave them everything last week. Second down 11 from the 49. Loss of a yard or two on that previous play. Ellis. Here's Brooks. Great speed. And oh my, will he tuck it in and give you a lick to the 30-yard line. South Carolina first down. Tim, you got to like that in a receiver, the fact that he'll meet you head on after he turns it upfield. This man to man underneath their best against George's best, Ben Smith running with Brooks. He just gets open across the middle, no pressure. Gets open all the way across the field, Smith chasing. Now Vince Guthrie comes off to make the stop. But you just can't let him get in there. You can't let him get into the middle of the field. 264 yards in the air today for Ellis. He's going to go over 1,000 for the season during this game. Penalty marker looked like Mark Fryer, the right tackle, number 78, made a move at the line of scrimmage. Ellis is only about 22, 23 yards away from 1,000 yards passing Plus start. on the season. On the offense. In only the fourth game. And he looks so calm and composed, Bob, and he is... He, he knows exactly what he wants to do. And again, Al Groh has got to be excited about the progress this young has, man has made. In his first two years as a quarterback, he threw 44 interceptions. That's almost hard to do. <laughs> and this year so far, he has zero. Throwing the ball on time. Donut. 3.24 to go, third quarter. South Carolina 20, Georgia 3. It'll be first down 15. <laughs> Ellis, there he is, selecting his receivers. Picked off just as we talk about it. It's Beasley with the interception. The first interception of the year for Ellis. He had a lot of time to throw it. He waited. He pumped fake a couple of times. Tried to throw it to Hart Brown, but up comes Beasley. Ellis had thrown 116 passes prior to this before the interception. Smith has helped so he tries to get a piece of them and then turns them loose to Beasley, who did a good job getting there. Uh, that was just not a wise throw. you got to get that ball in there in a hurry on the fade or just let it go and look someplace else against that two deep zone. Just trailing by 17 with 3.04 to go in the third. they got to start making something happen pretty soon. Toss it out to Arthur Marshall. Nice move. Marshall about six yards. There you go. Ron Rebune with the stop. There you go, nice and easy. Just a little set. Get the ball out to him. Let him go. Try to beat the tackle. But that, that instead of a 10-yard O-cut, that's a hard throw to throw. And uh, good. Like to see that. Vince likes to see that too. Second down three. Hand off Henderson. Nice move. First down or close to it. Henderson. Depend on the spot here. You know, it's so hard for a team that's good, Bob, not to get nervous when they're behind. I mean, they, they, what am I doing here? I mean, it's like a good golfer being in the rough. You and I, we're used to that. <laughs> <laughs> we love the rough. <laughs> we're, not, we're not excited about that. We can whack it out of here. But uh, so Georgia, Georgia football team's not used to being behind. You just got to maintain your composure. Georgia has freshman Kevin Maxwell in at a receiver position on first down. Off the option, fumble, South Carolina had the ball. Wait for the signal. South Carolina had it, and then it looked like a Georgia player dived in there. We'll wait for the signal. Well, the officials have never 
were signaled, but it is South Carolina ball. Talk about a fence sitter. The official over there would sort of wave towards South Carolina. It is a fumble recovery for the Gamecocks. You're watching the SEC on TBS Sports. Got to get something going. They got to get some points on the board here. It's 20 to 3. The ball slides in. It was yanked out by a South Carolina offensive lineman. Derek Little covers the ball. Tally's in there fighting for it. Hey, that's what I like to see. A quarterback that will fight for the football, but he can't dig it out of that linebacker's arms, and it's first and 10 South Carolina. Leading 20 to 3. Ellis throws the interception, then the fumble. South Carolina back in business. is Platt to the 27-yard line. Tackled by Chuck Carswell. Let's watch Platt here. Hard and Brown running deep. I really thought they'd go for the knockout punch here, but Platt curls it to the outside. Ellis finds him, patiently waits. There's nobody really upfield forcing Todd Ellis. There's no containment there. Carl Platt's going to develop into a fine receiver for South Carolina has gone over a thousand yards on the season and this is the fourth game here's the pitch to Haynes the fullback the freshman driven out of bounds at the 22 and a half yard line you know Bob South Carolina starts this season with five receivers that have never started a football game and, and four out of five of them have never even played in a college football game now I call that significant in experience the injured Georgia player 28 Aaron Chubb out at about the 34 yard line South Carolina leading 20 to 3 second down five when we come back they're helping Chubb off the field now minute 39 to go in the third the last time Georgia met Carolina in Columbia the game ended in some confusion you may recall back in 1986 bulldog quarterback james jackson ran out the clock but left the ball on the ground and in play carolina recovered but since the fumble can't be advanced the game ended but not before a few anxious moments for vince dooley as the officials sorted out what you have to call bizarre events the officials were talking about being one second on the clock but that is no way the game was over and georgia escaped on second down and five, Harold Green. He's thrown for a big loss back at the 30. Ben Smith came up to play the run from his left cornerback spot. And I'll tell you what Ben is feeling. Let me hit somebody. I mean, I feel bad. They threw a touchdown pass on me. That little rascal stuck inside me. You know, as a defensive back, you, you lay back there, and, and usually when you're called on to produce, it's not a physical thing as far as contact. And uh, so you have all this frustration build up in you when things aren't going right. Vince seems pretty calm. 29 yard lines where they spot the ball. It'll be third down 11, South Carolina. Leading by 17, minute left to go in the third quarter. Platten Brooks on the left side. The toss, diving grab by Brooks. Short of the first down. It will be a field goal attempt once again. They spot it at the 28. It'll be a 45-yard field goal attempt by Colin Mackey, who has hit 15 field goals in a row for South Carolina. Mackey is a sophomore. He's a preseason playboy All-American and a, just a great kicker. That's the only thing you can say. He's never missed a point after in his career. It should become apparent now to the Georgia secondary that they're throwing the quick out as a blitz checkoff. Somebody's going to have to make a big play to turn things around for Georgia. They might play that one aggressively the next time they're showing blitz. 41-yard field goal attempt from the middle of the field. He did not hit it well. He misses his first one. In the last 16 attempts, Mackey does not connect. And I'll tell you what, with six seconds to go in the third quarter, there's still a lot of time for Georgia. Georgia, with a full quarter remaining, does not have to go to a hurry-up offense. They can continue going with their strength. <laughs> a perfect. We saw their hurry-up offense on film last week <laughs> against Mississippi That's State. Right. They ran the ball seven times. <laughs> first down, stopping the clock via the first down. Right. All right, Georgia with the final play, probably, of the third quarter. Worley, reverse. It's Hummings way back there, though, and Hinton comes and makes the hit. 
Also little 99. Not much there. That's the end of the third quarter. A loss of about five on the play. Georgia trailing 20 to three. You're watching the SEC on TBS Sports. minutes of football remaining from williams Bryce stadium in columbia south carolina carolina with the 20 to 3 lead we said georgia has a lot of time they lost uh four yards on the first down play they better get it turning right now. now is the time to flip the switch on this offense get it on track second down 14 from the 20. bob neal and tim foley with you here's tally in at quarterback for the fourth quarter throwing on the run incomplete had a man open just couldn't connect John Cummings, the intended receiver. I'm talking to Tom McMahon, who, as a matter of fact, worked for Bill Lewis, the defensive coordinator at Georgia, when he was the head coach at Wyoming. Tom was his uh, defensive secondary coach. Tom McMahon said, Tim, it's going to look like there's a lot of people open. But the problem is their quarterback's going to have a hard time seeing, seeing them unless they can see through people because we're going to have somebody in their face. Third down, 14 Bulldogs from their own 20. And Worley in the backfield. Here come the Gamecocks. Scott Windsor with the sack. They tried to get Worley deep down the sideline. He's just running a fly up the sideline. But Windsor is there. As we said earlier, Bob, if you don't have it right now, third and long is the same as goal line for South Carolina. They're coming after you. Now Darren Parker into punt after Rodney Price had all the troubles out of his end zone. A beauty by Darren Parker. Uh, check, check that Joey Hester, of course. And it's Platt with the punt reception. And out of bounds. Hester with a long punt out of the end zone. of football remaining. This is a knockout punch area, Bob. You know, inside the 50, try to get quick seven. Dingle. Inside the 40 to the 39-yard line, Mike Dingle. You know, it's hard for a quarterback that is a strong arm gunslinger kind of guy to turn it down most of the time. Just turn it down. It's like having one of, one of those big stereos that you know that can make your hair blow and, uh, and just keeping it on level one all the time. But he's doing a great job. Good discipline. Second down four from the 39. Dingle first down South Carolina to the 34. Georgia defense misses, I believe, is John Brantley. Not only for his skill, but there's really no one that's come in and taken over. I mean, this is like Rambo. It's like trying to do a Rambo movie without Sylvester Stallone. You know, there's nobody that's really come in to become the force, the spirit, the heart of its Georgia defense yet. That's what the coaches are hoping for, somebody to take over. On first down 10, Ellis is thrown for about a mile. of 41 Anthony Parler had it it was right on the money you can't ask for any better than this he lets this go he's unpressured three-man rush Georgia playing coverage he is behind the secondary those, those kind of passes on, a, on that type of zone should be falling in the hands of a cornerback back there waiting for it. Second down, 10 from the 34. Right into the arms of
of Vince Guthrie, who was applying some pressure from the right side. 12.47 to go in the game. South Carolina leading 20-3. to It'll be third down 10. I think that ball hit him in the stomach. Do you see how high up in the air he was? Of course, Vince is excited when he gets into play close to the line like that. Where his number fits. <laughs> yeah, right. Stands back there with the 20s, you know, the 25, 20, 27, and then there's 54. He must feel just a little rejection. Numerical rejection. Third down 10 from the 34 now. South Carolina on a conversion situation. Ellis right down the middle. It is complete to number 83, Vic McConnell. Short of the first down. Let's see where they spot it. They move it forward. It is short of the first down. They try to bring the split end McConnell underneath the linebacker coverage of Georgia here. You see him dropping out. Demetrius. No, that's Brent Collins, number 93. Settle down now. Settle down. The ball is in the air, and, and Collins is still backing up. Come on. you got to come on back up in here. When the ball is thrown, when the quarterback stops backing up, then as a linebacker, you got to stop backing up. you got to get ready to react to the football. Good job by Douglas. Mackey missed from 41. This is a 43-yard attempt. He doesn't miss this when he started another string. 23 to 3, South Carolina. The third field goal of the day by Colin Mackey. Day. It's his ninth 300-yard plus game. He's gone over a thousand yards for the season already. Colin Mackey has three field goals. Brooks has a touchdown reception, being a touchdown run. Here's Henderson at the 27. He fair caught it this time. Now, Georgia, on the other hand, has rushed for a total of 101 yards today. Worley has 45. Hampton, only five yards on the day. Ellis does have 40. He had a long 27-yard run to open the game. The quarterbacks for Georgia, Wayne Johnson, 3 of 7 for 33. Tally, 4 of 10 for 24. This South Carolina defense has been all that was advertised. Joe Lee Dunn had him ready. Tally screens back to Hampton, way back behind the line of scrimmage. He didn't get anything on that. Hinton with the tackle. Talked about the scoring summary. Here you see it visually. Georgia opened the blood. Through first blood with a 27-yard field goal by Crumley. And Mackey came back and tied it. 23-yarder. Bing took it in after it looked like South Carolina was going to be denied inside the five again. Made it 10-3. Then the 36-yard TD pass. Mackey hit a 42-yarder, then a 43-yarder to make it 23-3. Second down nine. Tally. Drop at the 19. Hinton was back there. Frazier was back there. There's Frazier, number 90. There's just no time. Play fake. There's just no time. There's so much pressure upfield. By the time he turns around, Frazier's in his face, and all of a sudden it's party time, and uh, Derek, Greg Kelly ends up on the bottom of an ant pile. Third sack of the day for South Carolina. Third down, 18. Tally dumps it over the middle. Hampton with the reception, and he goes down at the 25. The first down stick is way out at the 39. Georgia will have to give it up. Hester comes into punt again. I think they're happy in South Carolina, Bob. The one interesting thing about Joe Lee Dunn's defense, it doesn't matter if you're 60 points ahead or 60 points behind, it's going to be the same thing. They're going to come after you. They don't have a prevent defense. Hester gets off another cannon shot. Platt at the 33. And down at the 36. He was hit by 85, Chris Broom. 9.56 to go in the ballgame. 41-yard punt, three-yard return. You're watching the SEC on TBS Sports. Rutgers about to beat Penn State for the first time since 1918. If they can hold on, Mike Body a couple of touchdowns in the third quarter. This one from 11 yards. He also had one from 57 yards out. It's 21-10. Back to Bob and Tim. 
the Scarlet Knights leading Penn State. Would who have thunk it? I'll tell you what, I wouldn't have believed this would be 23-3. That big a point spread, 20 points with 9.56 to go here at williams Bryce Stadium. You see the ball's been marked back to the 17-and-a-half-yard line. There was a flipping call against South Carolina on the return. Georgia's last 11 drives, they've had nine punts, a fumble, and an interception. Nothing to show for it. Markers down. Here. Carolina will be attempting, of course, to just chew up as much of this 952 as they can. Seven. Okay. We got a five. Penalty against South Carolina, second consecutive, and they move it back to the 18 for illegal motion. Georgia desperately hoping for a turnover here. The ball inside the 15-yard line of South Carolina. George Wynn is in for Ben Smith at that right cornerback spot. Carswell in at cornerback. Decided to get these guys some game experience. To the 15, and down goes Albert Haynes, the fullback. So you're going to get South Carolina balancing up their attack now, trying to chew up some clock. By the way, both schools have three timeouts remaining with 9.37 to go in the ballgame. Al Groh and Joe Morrison have to be ecstatic about the way Todd Ellis has responded. In talking to the people around South Carolina that football, they just say he's a different person, a much more mature attitude about what he's doing. Al Groh talked to him about wanting to become the best. How badly do you want to be the best football in college, uh, quarterback in college? And uh, he has really responded well to it. Well, we've seen some good ones like Hudson and Francis, et cetera. Here's one that's right there. Beautiful move by the freshman Brooks. First down. What a move by Robert Brooks, 18-year-old. That can also make the quarterback look pretty good in the statistical sheet. And as we said, Robert Brooks was supposed to be redshirted, actually, as Ellis hangs in there. He was supposed to be redshirted, but he just worked his way into a job. They couldn't keep him out of the lineup. Some of the veterans just weren't performing, and he just plays with enthusiasm. As you can see, he hasn't turned the throttle down yet. Todd Ellis has thrown for 323 yards on the day. The ninth time in his career he's thrown for 300-plus yards. Gil Brandt of the Dallas Cowboys is here at South Carolina today, and he said he likes several things about Ellis. He likes his size, but mostly he likes his dominant leadership personality. Passing offense in the last seven and a half quarters. Now South Carolina running the ball green out to the 34-yard line. Demetrius Douglas with the stop. Total yardage today, Georgia with only 150. The Bulldogs have rushed for only 91 yards, have thrown passes for only 59 yards. And the total offense for South Carolina, 386 yards. Robert Brooks, eight catches, 102 yards, but that doesn't say at all because he came up with a big first down reception and an important drive and then a one-handed touchdown catch that was just dramatic. Second down five from the 35. Look at Harold Green. Hit hard after he got the first down at the 43-yard line. But Green showing some moves. They like him, and he is a big league running back. No question about it. Ben Smith back in the game for Georgia now made the tackle. Smith, he, he looks like he's hurting a little. He came into the game with a bruised shoulder. Yeah, Bob, and uh, we should mention this. In defense of Ben Smith, who is... You know, one of the finest defensive backs to play at Georgia in a long time in terms of man-to-man -man coverage and just a physical defensive back. He hasn't practiced all week. Had really kind of a freak injury on Tuesday and, and uh, got hit on the shoulder there in a slight separation. First and 10 from the 43-yard line. South Carolina leading 23-3. That's Haynes, the fullback. Another Carolina first down. And now Georgia getting a taste of the medicine that they deal out often, and that is getting hammered with the running game late in the ball game. Georgia player slow to get up is Vince Guthrie. Look at the feet on Albert Haynes as that offensive line fires off. Watch this move. You know, this is a fullback. And uh, that's, that's, that's quickness, and that's hard to put a hat on right there. See Guthrie coming in, 
and he collides with another Georgia player, Brent Collins. Looks like he hyperextended his neck a little bit. But he is a Vince Guthrie is one of the most unselfish players on this Georgia football team because defensively he's playing out of position and uh, and this is his senior year, a year where you'd like to have a good year, and he's out there with the little guys. The small numbers. 7-14 remaining in the game, 23-3, South Carolina leading. They have the first down at the 46-yard line of Georgia. Ellis goes down. Right back in his face was Wycliffe Lovelace. That was a big loss. It took them back inside South Carolina territory, a loss of 12 on the play. 6.52 to go in this ball game and a 20-point South Carolina lead. This is another one of those games that's hard to figure on paper. You, you wonder who will win a ball game, a team with a great running attack or a great team with a great passing attack, and almost everybody says, mm, go with the team with a great ground game. And here it is, South Carolina, who's given up only three points today. Haynes. Gets six or seven yards out to midfield. Clock running, 6-19 and counting. And South Carolina just chewing up time. They took over possession of the ball with about nine and a half minutes left in the game, so they used over three minutes already on this drive. Would you, would you say, Bob, that this game is more important to South Carolina than it is to Georgia in the overall scope of things? Unquestionably. South Carolina an independent, trying to get national television exposure and respect. Georgia, even though they want to beat South Carolina, obviously, this doesn't mean anything in the Southeastern Conference race to them. Ames thrown for a loss. Clock to 540 in county. That was third down. And uh, long yardage and now it'll be a punting situation and in comes Rodney Price to punt for South Carolina. Well, something good happened for Georgia football this weekend. Dickie Clark is a coach of the defensive ends and his wife Angela gave birth to a little baby girl, Jessica. So Angela, congratulations. Be nice to Dickie when he gets home. He's been through a lot too. <laughs> 23 to 3 South Carolina. It's fourth and 16. Rodney Price. Almost blocked, but look at that. He'd been struggling all day, had one 19-yard punt. This time he just stared some white jerseys in the face and he hits it for 53 yards. That's a comeback for you. 4.53 remaining in the game. South Carolina leading at 23 to 3. You're watching the SEC on TBS Sports. Winless Tennessee against unbeaten Auburn. Tennessee had the lead until this play. Reggie Slack to Alexander Wright. 75-yard touchdown pass. And Auburn goes on top of Tennessee by the score of 7-3. Back to Bob and Tim. Thanks, Craig. Craig Sager will have all the updates on all the college action following our ball game. First down 10 from the 20 now. Georgia with 4.53 to go, trailing 23-3. Tally complete to Hummings. Short of the first down, he goes down at the 28-yard line. Derek Little with the stop for South Carolina. Well, no question Ellis has had a great day passing the football. But I'll tell you what, when you start handing out accolades, you got to look at the South Carolina defense. Georgia came in here leading the nation in the ground game. You see what they've done today. South Carolina has had a great defensive game plan and well executed. Tally lobs it up. Thomas can't get it. No flag. It was down at the 45-yard line. Defenders battling Thomas for the ball, but everybody had a shot at it. There's a flag down. I think they're going to get interference on Robert Robinson. Just a little hook and go, and that's what you got to do. You got to play it like that. Didn't look like he grabbed him. Looked like he just jammed him. Now he's trying to get his head around for the football. Holding on the defense. Yeah, first down. Yeah, defensive holding, uh, that's because it happened before the pass was thrown. There right. was no pass interference at the point. So, nevertheless, it's a first down and a break for Georgia. It stops the clock, moves it to 38-yard line. But well played by Robert, Robert Robinson. Good body position. He was committed to coming up on a short hitch, but got in the way enough that he prevented the long pass. First and 10 at the 38. 
South Carolina leading by 20. Georgia trying to get something going. Good pass rush by Little Tally. Nice move. Tally took a big hit by David Taylor. Then is finished off at the 40-yard line. They just don't slow down much. Old Joe Lee Dunn has got to be happy with his guys today. They've played very well. You and I saw this first happening out in New Mexico several years ago in New Mexico, Hawaii. We could not understand what we were looking at defensively. Remember that? Flying yes, in from everywhere. Back in 1982, and uh, Joe Lee Dunn and Joe Morrison were out there with several members of his coaching staff. Tally. Dodging black shirts, he completes this one to Thomas at the 49-yard line of South Carolina and out of bounds. 3.32 remaining in the game, gain of 10 on that pass. First down, Georgia. They led New Mexico to a 10-1 record that year and did not go to a bowl. I remember us dubbing that final game of the season for them the Taco Bowl. The Taco Bowl. An honorary. WTBS Taco Bowl. <laughs> Morrison from... After his great career with the Giants, went to Tennessee, Chattanooga, then to New Mexico, and now to South Carolina. Tally. Complete. Thomas broke the tackle. And out of bounds at the 26-yard line. Georgia on the move. Too little, too late, however. 3.25 to go in the game. Georgia does have three timeouts remaining, but they trail by 20. This is the thing that you have to do against this type of defense. They've got their defense clustered in there to stop the run. You've got to throw these little itty-bitty passes. And up until this point in time, South Carolina has been conservative. Their defensive backs come up and make the tackle. That time, Stephon Williams made it try to make a play on a ball. 22-yard gain that time. Tally to Thomas. Play fakes to Worley. Here they come. He gets rid of it to Henderson. What a heads-up play by Tally. Henderson down to the 25-yard line. Penalty markers down. Tally completed that pass as he went down. They're calling it Black Saturday here, by the way, at williams Bryce Stadium. Everybody was encouraged to wear the Joe Morrison-inspired all-black to the ball game, and a lot of the fans did that. Clipping on the offense. Call against Georgia. South Carolina is playing a zone here, which is rare for them. Tally trying to escape the grasp, grasp of Marty Dye, dumps it off to Henderson, cuts back upfield, and there's the clip by Tim Worley. Not real, uh, not a real vicious clip. That excuse me clip. Tally complete to Thomas on the far side and out of bounds, back to the 31-yard line. The first down stick, however, is down at the 17-yard line for Georgia. 2.43 to go in the ballgame. This one's in the books, folks. South Carolina 23, Georgia 3. Georgia may get something on the board here. So the Bulldogs are going to no doubt drop in the national rankings from ninth position they hold now. And the Gamecocks undoubtedly, in my opinion, will move into the top 10, or at least they certainly should, depending on what happens around the rest of the country. Tally over the middle. Complete to Sadowski down to the 20. 219 to go in the game. Okay, that was the zone. That's the last one you'll see. Joe Lee says, that's enough of that. Here we go. See what happens when we play yeah, right. that kind we of We be conservative. Look at They haven't given up a touchdown since North Carolina. And uh, that was on a, uh, a reverse, which is kind of a trick play. And they, uh, South Carolina would like to keep George out of the end zone here. Their defense finished in the top ten in four different defensive categories last year. This is third down three, Georgia. Fumble, Tally fell on it. Back at the 24. He's going to pitch to early. So it'll be fourth down for Georgia at the 24. They will, of course, go for it with a minute 32 to go in the game. Now that's not Joe Lee done. There's Vince Dooley. So we can find Joe Lee Dunn on the sidelines over there. This will be the 12th consecutive win for South Carolina at Williams Bryce Stadium. Tally has to call a timeout. There's a mix up on who's to do what. Tally coming to the sideline with a minute seven remaining in the game, and South Carolina leading 23 to 3.
Well, it's been that kind of day for Georgia. As we talk about a potential player of the game, you have to talk about the punter. There's Joe Lee Dunn on the sideline. On your right of your screen is Tom McMahon. He's still in this one. Fourth and seven, Georgia. Complete for the first down to Worley, who struggles to the 10. 58 seconds to go in the game, and the Bulldogs hoping to crack it into the end zone, even though they're going to take the defeat, a 14-yard gain. Hampton goes into the game for Worley. The Bulldogs will have to go lick their wounds and then move on to play Mississippi and Vanderbilt back-to-back -back at Athens and then play at Kentucky. First and 10, Georgia. Tally. Up the middle. Dives to the three-yard line. Clock down to 39 seconds. Georgia can get inside the one for a first down, and Notre Dame is not letting Purdue back in the game at this point. And look at that. West Virginia really laid a licking on Pittsburgh. 31 to 10. Two fine football teams. You figure that out. Pittsburgh beats Ohio State 41 to 10, and now... I guess if you could figure it out, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> <laughs> I had it. Uh, I had a, a series of events figured out last week as Alabama is leading Vanderbilt 17 to three in the second quarter. Series of events last week said certain things have happened. Rutgers could have been number one. Might have been right because today Rutgers was handing Penn State all they could handle. That's, that's look at that. It's 96 yards, longest in Florida history. Emmett Smith, he is excited. Candidate, Wyoming leading Air Force. Well, Ellis sure made a statement about the Heisman here today. 321 yards in the air, one touchdown, 28 of 43. And South Carolina made a statement about their program, too. I mean, it's a balanced offense. It's not, uh, they went to the run and shoot a couple of years ago because of an inexperienced line and a, a plethora, a Kim, that's a Kim Anderson word, of wide receivers. And uh, since those guys all graduated, they got some good running backs, they got balance now. Second down goal from the three, Georgia. 36 seconds to go in the game. South Carolina with the big lead. Here is Henderson. Touchdown, Bulldogs. Too little, too late, however, from a Georgia point of view. Let's see this one again. Toss to Henderson. The tailback. Rebune upfield, and that's just no match right there. The game is over, but it's six points for Georgia. South Carolina can be really proud of their defensive effort today, and both offensive and defensive efforts. And Georgia's the type of team that's never going to lay down. They keep coming back, and you'll see an onside kick next. 23-10, South Carolina with 32 seconds to go in the ball game. And next week, yours truly and Tim Foley will be at Kentucky, Commonwealth Stadium. Kentucky with a big lead at halftime over Kent State today, and Alabama with a 17-3 lead over Vanderbilt at Tuscaloosa. So we'll see the Crimson Tide and the Kentucky Wildcats. Kentucky gave Auburn all they could handle before succumbing to the Tigers down in Auburn on our season opener here on TBS. And once again, I imagine Kentucky will be outsized, but the uh, one thing you can say about the Jerry Claiborne coach team, they'll never be outfought. <laughs> Vince has got to be a little bit disturbed about his team's performance today. The game started out like it might be a runaway the other way. And uh, it, Georgia just knocked off six and seven yards at a time, a 27-yarder by Alfonso Ellis at that time. I'm sure Vince, who's the third winningest coach in active coach in football today felt confidence that he'd tack another one up in the W column but South Carolina fought back off the bat 42nd time these two teams have met since 1894 and only the eighth South Carolina victory Georgia probably attempting an onside kick at least South Carolina anticipating that here it comes South Carolina got it boy it was almost in the hands of Carswell of Georgia he made a valiant effort to get it, but it was Vic McConnell who came up with it for South Carolina. 32 seconds left in the game, and now nothing but the nail in the coffin. Todd 
Ellis today 321 yards what a day he's had but the real star has been the young 18 year old true freshman Robert Brooks eight catches 102 yards including a one handed touchdown grab that was part of that South Carolina surge it was really instrumental in breaking the back of the Georgia defense and you've got to say that the entire South Carolina defensive team has had a great game uh, Patrick Hinton David Taylor Scott Windsor you can go on and on Matt McKernan started off playing real well Derek Frazier Mike Tolbert with an interception and the artist Woodard came up and played well uh, replacing Kurt Wilson I don't think there's going to be a final play here 17 seconds remaining South Carolina ends the undefeated streak of the Georgia Bulldogs 23 to 10 South Carolina has just won their 12th consecutive game at Williams Bryce Stadium and remains undefeated and headed upward in the national polls. institution recognizing this honor Robert Brooks and Ben Smith the Holiday Inn players of the game final score South Carolina 23 Georgia 10 next week Tim and I will be in Lexington Kentucky as the 13th ranked Alabama Crimson Tide take on Jerry Claiborne's Kentucky Wildcats live from Commonwealth Stadium the action begins at 1230 Eastern Time right on this station Today's game has been brought to you by Quaker State Motor Oil with QSX for the maximum protection against sludge. By Budweiser, proud sponsor of the 1988 U.S. Olympic team. This Bud's for you. By Buick and your Buick dealers. The Great American Road belongs to Buick. And by the U.S. Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. The executive producer of TBS Sports is Don McGuire. Coordinating producer of SEC Football is Skip Ellison. Today's game directed by Tom Smith, associate producer Jeff Bakey, associate director Ken Nolan, and the rest of the fine TBS Sports crew. of the Turner Broadcasting System. You've been watching the SEC on TBS Sports. The Coach Joe Morrison Show is being brought to you in part by CNS Bank. By Carolina Pride. The best things in life are made with Carolina Pride. By the Columbia Coca-Cola Bottling Company. When Coca-Cola is part of your life, you can't beat the feeling. By Duquesne, the innovators in gas grills. By your Carolina Chrysler Plymouth dealers. By Roper Temporary Services, Columbia's best temporary services. And by yesterday's restaurant and tavern for regional American cooking in an atmosphere that's downright homey. with Coach Joe Morrison. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Coach Joe Morrison Show. One of those wonderful days yesterday at Williams-Brice Stadium, fourth largest crowd ever to see the Gamecocks play at home, 74,800, and what a victory, a 23-10 over a top-10-ranked team, the Georgia Bulldogs. Always great to get one over the Bulldogs, but Coach, it's the way you did it. You dominated most every phase of the game. Well, I told her young men after the ball game, I was very, very proud of them. I think uh, one of those ball games come along... Uh, just every once in a while where you get a complete effort, and I mean a hard effort, from everybody involved in the football game, offensively, defensively, uh, special teams. Uh, they hung in there for 60 minutes, and their effort was there both physically and mentally, and uh, I'm, uh, the coaching staff's very proud of them. Well, obviously, you certainly have to be. I mean, in a game like that, you can name a lot of names, but I think let's take a unit and name 
A unit, the offensive line, I thought, really played very, very well for, for Todd and for the backs to run the ball. They did an excellent job on uh, pass protection. Uh, we put the ball up something like 43 times, got one sack. Uh, uh, Running-wise, you know, uh, again, Albert Haynes had a good day. Harold Green came in. We didn't know how much he was going to be able to play, and uh, he turned in a fine ball game. Keith Thing, uh, we were primarily going to use him on uh, blocking just for pass protection back there, and he ended up running the football and doing uh, very, very well. Mike Dingle played well, and uh, I guess the list could go on and on, but, uh, you know, I think you have to just talk about all the team and the units. Is, uh, they gave a great effort. Uh, they had a good week of practice. Uh, they practiced with intensity. They practiced with concentration, and they paid off for them on Saturday. And certainly that's the way it was on the defensive side of the football, where Georgia comes in as the nation's number one rushing defensive team. Jolie Dunn's team took a little heat after last week against East Carolina, but they had it all together yesterday against Georgia. Well, they did. They played uh, very well. And uh, as he told me during the course of the week, I guess that's the first time he thought he ever had to apologize for a shutout after last week. But uh, uh, they came back and they played an excellent ball game today. And the one thing that we were concerned about uh, was the tackling because of their... Uh, large backs, powerful backs, and, uh, uh, you know, just looking at it from the sidelines, I don't believe we had too many missed tackles during the course of the afternoon. I don't think so. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Go out to williams Bryce Stadium. Yesterday afternoon, it was hot. 90 degrees in the sunshine. And uh, this is a, a game that it was a little confusion at the beginning. And the sunshine brings out, you know, the, the strange ones, too, and they have everybody having a good time. But a little confusion at the beginning of this game. They defer and end up receiving twice. How'd that happen? Well, they did. Uh, they won the toss, and they elected to defer, and the referee turned to our captains and said, which goal do you want to defend? And uh, I guess through all the nervousness and everything, they uh, pointed out the goal that we wanted to defend, and uh, then Georgia took the ball, you know, and I think the official really needed to explain all the options to our young men rather than just ask a question. Now, here's a, a new look on the kickoff. Colin Mackey kicking off and just kind of pooch it down there to about the 25-yard line. Make them call for a fair catch. And you don't want that run back. They have a great run back. No, they, they do. They have a great uh, kickoff return individual, and uh, we were concerned about their punt return individual because they've done very well with that so far this year. That was Ellis on the first one. He gets over 20, almost 30 yards in the first effort. This is... Uh, Georgia's first possession and they're moving the ball and Wayne Johnson to John Thomas for 11. Here's a first and 10 now. They're down to 12 yard line. Good drive going. Well, they had an excellent drive the first time they got the ball and uh, naturally we were very concerned on the sidelines with the way they moved down the field. Now they had 102 yards rushing for the game. Remember the nation's leading rushing team now and most of it on this first drive. The, the defense really plays hard here and comes up with some big plays. Well, Here's they one. do and uh, quarterback's rolling out, and Matt McKernan comes up, puts a little pressure on him, forces him out of bounds. Get some help from friends, a loss of three, brings up fourth and eight, and Steve Crumley's going to try a field goal from 27 yards, which is good. The Bulldogs have the lead, 17 plays, 65 yards, four and a half minutes of time, an impressive drive. Uh, you can't do anything with it first time you get the football. Three downs, you're out, you have to punt the ball away, and here comes George again. Any concern at this time? Well, I think any time you're behind three to nothing and after a drive like that, uh, their first drive, you're, you're concerned, you know. But our defense came back and did an excellent job. They tried to reverse and uh, played that very well. And played the reverse well all day. And you know that they had seen East Carolina have some success with that just a week ago. Some pressure on the passer. They'll start to pay off as they uh, miss the Dowski on that one. I thought their punter had an excellent day. He uh, not only got him up there for good hang time, but he had good distance on his punts as well. Carl Platt doing a good job receiving the punts, too. That one on a fair catch. And here you go offensively now. It's the second time. Todd really hung in there. He stayed in the pocket very well. Carl adjusted his route and made a good run after he caught the ball. Yeah, it looked like the duck got shot in the wing on this one a little bit. Wobbled out there, but uh, got the job done, didn't it? Billy Kilmer would love that. <laughs> But it got there. That's the main thing. Nice run after the catch, too, by Carl Platt, who cut four balls for 78 yards in the afternoon. This is a look at that same play, ground level. 25 yards on that one after a, a Georgia offsides now. It's first and five. 
come back with a trap play up the middle to Keith, and uh, he picked up six yards. They only carried the ball four times, but for 27 yards, and they always seem to be big carries for him, and he's hurt. Good protection. Come back to Carl, and he picked up about nine yards. Here's a second down and uh, one now on this next play, and you're going to see uh, Keith Bing again. It's the line doing a good job here opening things up. Did an excellent job of blocking, and Keith did a good job of picking his hole and running to the right area and gained about seven yards. And first and ten, you're on the Georgia 22. Look off. Little screen after Harold. Got some good blocks out front of him and a fine run. Drive bogs down. You get down inside the ten. It's fourth and goal at the six. And you call on Colin Mackey, who makes it 14 straight and owns a new school record with that. Tied at 3-3. 27 yards, 10 plays, three minutes. Still in the first quarter, Georgia back in the offense. But Good pressure. That was a fine play by Pat Hinton and Corey Miller coming in on the tackle. They lose nine, and here's a look at it on the ground level, what it looks like now for Wayne Johnson, who's trying to find somebody to throw it to. Not going to have a lot of time to throw it. The defense really active and getting good pressure on Johnson and Pally all day long. Try to come outside with Worley, but to close him down. That was a fine play by Pat Hinton and Matt McKernan. A gain of two. And now it's third down, 17, back at the 16. And they're not going to try anything foolish from there. And the defense shuts down Worley for four. And they're forced to punt, and we start another drive. Again, good pass protection, and uh, Todd goes up top. And fine catch. Harden Brown. 25 yards on that one. Here's first and five now. This is down to the 29-yard line. Oh, Bing again. Well, good blocking up front. Good hole for Keith to run through, and he did an excellent job. Give him 10. This is the one to keep a drive alive. Boy, that's a great throw and catch. That was a fine throw, and uh, Carl made an excellent adjustment and a good catch. This is a new play I put on in the week, and I just run a post down the middle, and then we have two outside guys that run up their different routes. And the middle was wide open. Nobody was on me, so he just threw it down over the guy's head, and I just came up with it. Maybe it was a little confusion on the Georgia defense that time, and uh, right at the line of scrimmage, and allowed uh, Carl to get down the middle. That keeps that drive alive, down to the uh, inside the five-yard line. And here's Keith Bing. Well, we tried a couple of passes, and then we gave the ball to Keith, and he got the ball in the end zone for the touchdown. Really an impressive drive, Coach. 80 yards, just eight plays. He did it well, and he gets the ball over the plane. Colin Mackey gets the extra point. He still hasn't missed in his college career. And here you go with a 10 to 3 lead now. In the second quarter, back offensive. We'll get the ball back, and uh, Todd hit Albert Haynes out in the flat. Young freshman from up in Connecticut caught the ball very well out of the backfield. Did an excellent job, not only catching the ball, but running the ball as well. Oh, fine catch for George Rush. He makes a couple of them here coming up. In this one, there's another one. They're going to go right back to him. That was a good catch. That was third down play, and uh, we were able to pick up the first down. Got five yards extra on that. Now here's talk about your great catches. That was a great catch. We <laughs> were unable to see that from the sidelines, you know, but uh, we did see the officials' hands go up in the air. And, um, it was supposed to be an outside release, and I kind of got in the, in the room got out of position. I made an inside release because the corners were, you know, just dropping out and covering the fade. And, you know, I just, I was, it was like a sale read. I was supposed to clear the guy out. And Todd saw me. I had beat him downfield. And Todd saw me and threw the ball to the corner. And I had to get back in position. I had to stick my one hand out there and make the catch. Robert Brooks, freshman from up Greenwood way. And he just turned it into a human highlight film out there. Well, that was a great catch and great move and uh, certainly a fine throw on Todd's part. 17 to 3 at halftime and another impressive drive. 81 yards in eight plays, four minutes. Your halftime looks like that. And some uh, very impressive halftime statistics to go uh, right along with it uh, as well. You just really opened it up, did very, very well in the first half. In uh, first downs, here's a look at it 13 to 7, rushing 11 tries for 40. They have 25 tries, only 85 yards. Passing impressive, 205 to 36. And a wide edge in total yards, 245 to 121, the end of the first half. And we'll be back with more in a moment.
halftime. I guess the fans now just say, well, can we hold on? Three plays into the drive, and Georgia has trouble holding on. It's the third and one, and they almost don't get it after Johnson fumbled. Well, they fumbled the ball, and uh, one of their offensive linemen recovered and came back and hit a little pass. That was Sir Henderson for 14 yards. Here's third and five later on in the drive. Here's a big play. Stops their opening drive. Pat Hitton put uh, good pressure on him, and uh, Mike makes a fine interception there, but they called the ball down uh, where he intercepted it. You get the ball. Again, and playing a three-man defense in the back, shot out of the backfield, and I just I happen to be in the right place at the right time. Yeah, maybe so, but uh, Hinton really gives him some help here too. With uh, his pressure coming. He's getting a little pressure, and Mike makes a fine play, and uh, good concentration. I don't think that knee was down either, but you do get the ball back, and here you come again. You come on the draw play to Albert Haynes, and he picks up five yards. Young freshman playing very well. Here's a big third down and five now at the 34-yard line. It's an incomplete pass, but there's pass uh, interference on the call on Georgia here. Going to give you the first down, and they did a lot of jumping around. Was there a change in cadence a little bit, Baton? Well, we've been utilizing a non-rhythmic cadence and uh, caused them to jump just a little bit. We can get six. Late well, in a drive, you're in a second and ten situation here. Comes back and gets the ball to Harold. We pick up seven more yards. Now you're third and three. It's a ground level look at the next play. Nice job here by Brooks again. It was. Fine uh, call by Todd and good throw and a good catch by Robert. And you come up short later in the drive, and Mackey's back on the field and trying to win a field goal. A ground level look at that as he splits the uprights, and he has now hit 15 in a row, and it's 20 to 3. 11 plays, 46 yards, 4 minutes, and here's a good defensive series. And when there were so many of them, too. Throw in a hurry and can't get it on the outside, and Robinson over on the coverage. So now it's second and 10 at 31. And good hustle on part of the defense. Everybody reacting and getting to the ball. Now you're third and five. Here comes Worley, and he's as good as there is carrying the football. But not this time. There's Taylor. Again. That was a fine play by Taylor. Guys did a good job tackling. Once they made the initial hit, nobody's getting away. And here's this near block. Is that Baker? Marty Baker. That's Carl good. did an excellent job fielding punts all day long. Hester did a good job kicking it. Uh, we turn it over on this next series. That's where Todd gets his first pass interception after 117 tries, and George is back on offense again. They come with uh, the reverse once again. Pat Hinton's there. And a bunch of folks around the football. A lot of his friends show up, and it's second and 14 now at the 20-yard uh, line. Quarter ends. You go into the fourth quarter now. This is Tally who's back in at quarterback, and they used the two quarterbacks. Nothing doing outside. They try to hit Hummings on that. Here's a third and 14. There's a great play. Get good pressure. Scott Windsor hmm. makes a tackle. And then Taylor had playing leapfrog with the blocker there. We had a, a two men coming off from the outside, and what happened was, uh, I believe the tight end of the guard, or the tackle turned out, and I just slid underneath him and came clean. You know, just something you just never can stop going. Here it is. This is the way that uh, Tally sees it. And he just doesn't see Windsor. He's on him. Three black jerseys right on top of him. And that brings up a fourth down and punting situation for Hester, who's been hitting them good all day. And now the drill went out of the end zone. And again, there's good pressure on him. But also a nice return here by Carl. Finds little C. He does. He breaks a tackle and gets outside. Looks like Turner had a pretty good block for him there to seal things off. Inside to 50. Here's Dingle. Come back with a little screen out to Mike, and he picks up seven yards. Now you got second and three at the 39. Again, good hard running. He breaks the tackle to the line of scrimmage, and Mike picks up five yards for us. Odd looking to throw. This time looks for McConnell and gets McConnell. That was a fine catch by Vic coming across the middle. Linebacker was right there with him. Colin Mackey. 
After missing one uh, earlier, we had the string broken, but he comes back and hits this one and makes it 23 to three as he drives home a 40 yard plus field goal. 43 on this one. 20 yards, six plays. Come back with the screen. This was a real fine play by Michael Talbert and uh, Pat Hinton. And they get just one yard on that one. Here's more pressure on a second and nine. Everybody's coming. Derek Frazier makes a fine play. Pat Hinton's in there. And they'll look at it again. Tough to throw the ball when you've got to worry about where they're coming from. Derek had a fine ball game. He played hard all day long, played very well. And Raboon played well, too. We haven't talked much about him here, but he had like 16 tackles. Oh, he did an excellent job. Over the middle and really not much there. This is a drive now for Georgia. The Gamecock fans celebrating. They have to punt it away, and here you come back offensively. Excellent move by Robert Brooks getting outside. I believe that was second or third down play, and he picked up the first down. Yeah, he had got 14 yards. You needed 13. And now, later in the drive, it's second and four. And Harold Green makes a nice run. Gets it was a good run. Eight in the first down, but this drive. Dogs down, stalls, and you have to punt. And George is going to go on the attack. They get it over the middle to that big tight end, Sadowski. And he was big. He was a good sized tight end. Here's a big fourth down play. This is fourth and six. And this is a scoring drive for George. This keeps it alive. And they get it to Worley for 13 yards. Windsor and Rebune are there. And now it's second and uh, three. There's the little pitch. That's their touchdown. But those three yards, keep in mind, the nation's leading rushing team, those three yards put over 100 yards for the day in rushing the football with 102 yards. It's considered 27 came in the first rush of the football game. And the final stats, uh, like the final score, much in favor of the Gamecocks. 23 to 10 in first downs, 28 rushes, 76 yards. And the passing, Todd, brilliant again, just the one interception. And 397 total yards, 241. Todd Ellis over 1,000 yards in just four games. We'll be back to take a look at our officials' call of the week right after this. You know, in the game of college football, there's one penalty that's guaranteed to bring all the fans to their feet, and that's pass interference whether it's called or not called. Now, we prepared a little demonstration that will give you an idea of what that official has to look for when he either calls or doesn't call pass interference. One of the things that really gets fans excited in a football game is pass interference or when pass interference is not called. Remember, these two men both have a right to the football. They have no territorial rights. As they're coming out, Notice that both of them are going for the ball. They're both looking for the football. Their legs get entangled. They both go down. Somebody wants pass interference, but that's a no call. There was no pass interference here because there was no intent to impede. But for pass interference, when you have physical contact with the intent to impede, then you do have a pass interference. And a lot of times these players will try and get a little sneaky Pete in there hoping nobody will see it where they're both reaching for the ball, but you'll notice he's pushing off on the offensive player, trying to divert everybody's attention with his hands. That's pass interference. Pass interference. Next time, besides the goal line, let's see how important that sideline is. And our thanks to the Southern Independent Officials Association for the rules of the game. And coach, again, congratulations, a great effort. Well, it was a good effort. I think by our coaching staffs, offensively, defensively, certainly the special teams, and most of all, our young men. They deserve a tremendous amount of credit for their effort today. Well, maybe next week it will be the Gamecocks in the top ten. Appalachian State, it's homecoming. Cockfest on Friday night. Be there.